Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Telescoping Series, which is one of the weirdest series from Calc 2, and that's because it doesn't really follow the form of any of the other series tests that we have. It's also interesting because it's one of the only series we can find the sum for. It's this in Geometric Series. So I don't have a good formula for Telescoping Series, so instead we're just going to look at an example. So let's say I have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2. This is a very standard format you're going to see for telescoping series. It's one fraction minus another fraction. As soon as you see that, you should be thinking it's probably telescoping series. And now, here's what I do. I'm going to write out the first few terms of this series by plugging in 1, then 2, then 3, etc. So in other words, it's going to be, starting from 1, 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 2 is 3, and then plus the next term when n equals 2. It's going to be 1 half minus 1 over 2 plus 2 is 4, so 1 fourth. I'll do one more. It's going to be 1 third minus 1 fifth plus dot dot dot. Hopefully you see the pattern. Now, look at what cancels here. 1 third is going to cancel. If I were to have kept going, 1 fourth would cancel. 1 fifth would cancel. Everything's going to end up canceling except for two terms. The 1 half and the first one. And these are the terms that do not cancel. The first two terms. Specifically the left position in the first two terms. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the last few terms and we're going to see what doesn't cancel out on the other side. What do I mean by that? Well, the very last term in this series is going to be, well, technically it's infinity, but it's really just 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2. That's the last term in this series. The second to last term is 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. And then the third to last term is 1 over n minus 2 minus 1 over n. Maybe you start to see the pattern now. But really all I care about is this term and this term, because if the first two terms did not cancel, then the right position in the last two terms will not cancel, and everything else will cancel. Leaving me with this. 1 plus 1 half minus 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. Last thing I do is I am taking the limit here as n goes to infinity, because this is basically what we're doing, n is going towards infinity. So it's 1 plus 1 half minus 1 over infinity minus another 1 over infinity. Both of these become 0. So the answer is just 1 plus 1 half or 3 halves. Now the cool thing about this, two things. Number one, the answer is converges because we didn't get infinity. If it was infinity, then it would have been diverges but we got three halves. Now, the cool thing is three halves is the sum. Like I said earlier, there's only two types of series we can find the sum for. It is geometric and this one, telescoping. Everything else we can only say converges or diverges. And another thing, this is one of the easiest problems you'll ever see, the one we just did. So it only gets harder from here. And the only way we're gonna get better is if we keep doing example problems. So let's look at a few more. Next, I have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 4 over 2n plus 1 minus 4 over 2n plus 7. So, how do we do this one? Well, remember what we did before. We plugged in the first value, n equals 1, and then we kept going, plugging in n equals 2, n equals 3, etc. So, for the first one, it's going to be 4 over 2 times 1 plus 1, that's 3 minus 4 over plugging in 1, I get 9, okay? Then the next term, when n equals 2, I'm going to get 4 over 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5, minus 2 times 2 plus 7 is 11, so minus 4 over 11. I'm going to write smaller so I can fit more in here. Okay, the next term, when I plug in 3 for n, I'm going to get 4 sevenths minus 4 thirteenths. You can probably start to notice the pattern by now. And then the next one would be 4 over 9 minus 4 over 15. And finally, I'm going to stop there. Why? 
because I just found the one that canceled. Nine is the first number that cancels, and everything after that will cancel. Meaning, 11's gonna cancel, 13's gonna cancel, 15's gonna cancel. Everything after nine cancels, except four thirds, four fifths, and four sevenths. In other words, the left term of the first three terms. Which means, on the other side, it's gonna be the right position of the last three terms, who do not cancel. So specifically, the last term, 4 over 2n plus 1 minus 4 over 2n plus 7. Then the second to last term, which you have to be careful here because if I'm plugging in n minus 1, it would be like 2 times n minus 1 plus 1, which is 2n minus 1. And if you're confused by what I'm doing, I'm saying that to get the term before it, you have to replace n with n minus 1. Another way of thinking about it is that since it's 2n here, I count by twos. Like this was 2n plus 1, now it's 2n minus 1. The next one will be 2n minus 3, 2n minus 5, etc. So we'll get 4 over 2n minus 1 minus 4 over 2n plus 5. And then I just need one more because we said the first three terms don't cancel. So 4 over 2n minus 3 minus 4 over 2n plus 3. And if you're not good at this, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. But now I will pay attention to the fact that this term cancels, this term cancels, and this term cancels, leaving me with this one, this one, and this one. And so the final answer is gonna be 4 thirds plus 4 fifths plus 4 sevenths, and then minus these three terms, 4 over 2n plus 3, minus 4 over 2n plus 5, minus 4 over 2n plus 7. And this is the limit, again, as n goes to infinity. So, 4 thirds plus 4 fifths plus 4 sevenths, we can get a common denominator here of whatever 15 times 7 is, 105. So common denominator of 105, I have to multiply all these fractions. The second one's gonna be, it's missing the three and the seven, so 21 over 21. And then the last one, fourth sevenths, is missing the three and the five, so 15 over 15. And then the last three terms all become zero because it's an n in the denominator and it's going to infinity. So anyways, this is gonna be what? 120 plus 20, so 140 plus 84 plus 60, all over 105. That will be 224. 284 over 105. I don't think this reduces, so that's the final answer. A beautiful answer if I've ever seen one. And most importantly, this converges, and this is the sum. And there we go. Okay, so I have two problems left I wanna look at today. They are the hardest ones, of course. The next one is the series from n equals two to infinity of two over n squared minus one. And I ask you to solve this using a telescoping series. Now the confusing thing here is that we don't have a telescoping series. Remember, telescoping series is always one term minus another term. So this doesn't cut it. However, I hope you realize that this can be factored. It can be two over n plus one times n minus one, if you factor it. And now we say, oh shoot, is this partial fraction decomposition? Yes, it is. So if you forget that, I've got a video on how to solve integrals with partial fraction decomposition. You can check that one out. But assuming you already know partial fraction, it's going to look like this. Two over n plus one times n minus one equals a over n plus one plus b over n minus one. And now I gotta solve for a and b. To do that, I'm gonna multiply both sides by the denominator. The left side will be two. The right side will be a times quantity n minus one plus b times quantity n plus one. And again, I'm skipping a few steps with the algebra, but assuming you're still with me here, I'm going to say let n equal positive one first to solve for b, because now two equals a times one minus one plus b times one plus one. So we get two equals zero a plus two b b ends up equaling positive one. Now if I want to solve for a, I'm gonna let n equal negative one, because that's gonna 
cancel out the b. So in other words, two equals a times negative one minus one plus b times zero. So two equals negative two a and a equals negative one, giving me a over n plus one plus b over n minus one will become negative one over n plus one plus one over n minus one. And now let me just write this in reverse order. So now it's one over n minus one minus one over n plus one. And there, now I have the normal telescoping series form, which I can now use. So once again, I'm gonna start plugging in numbers, starting with two. It's going to be one over two minus one is one, minus one over two plus one is three, so one third, plus the next term is when n equals three, so it will be one half minus one fourth, and then the next term will be one third minus one fifth, and now we see that things start to cancel. Everything higher than three will cancel, leaving me with one half and one over one, the first two terms, or the left position in the first two terms. So that means I need the last two terms in the right positions. So it will be one over n minus one, minus one over n plus one, and then subtracting one from both of those, it's going to be one over n minus two, minus one over n. And again, these terms cancel, and these do not. And so we'll get a final answer of limit as n goes to infinity of one plus one half minus one over n minus one over n plus one. Once again, these terms go to zero because when you plug in infinity, it becomes zero. So we get one plus one half, which is going to be three halves. And we would say converges and the sum is three halves. And that is the answer for that one. Now, by now, I'm sure you're wondering, is it always gonna be these terms just go to zero? So is it even important? First of all, yes, it's important because you need to show your work to get full credit. The second thing is, no, they will not always be zero. Here's an example where that doesn't happen. Let's say I have the series from n equals one to infinity of e to the one over n minus e to the one over n plus one. So even though it's the weird e stuff that's going on here, we still follow the exact same process. And what is that? First you plug in one, then two, then three, etc. So for this one, it's gonna be e to the one minus e to the one half, then plus e to the one half minus e to the one third. And already we see that we got things to cancel out. Isn't that nice? And so the only one that's not gonna cancel out is the very first one. Meaning the only one I need to write out for the last term is e to the one over n minus e to the one over n plus one. And that's it. Oh, and this one cancels, leaving me with only that one. So then we have limit as n goes to infinity of e to the one minus e to the one over n plus one. Now I plug in infinity here. This gets me, uh, e is just e, and then minus e to the one over infinity. This is not infinity. This exponent will become zero. And if you have e to the zero, that's the same thing as one, so really the answer is e minus one. This is the sum. And because this is still not infinity, we get converges again. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen a telescoping series diverge. I'm sure it's possible. I've just never seen it. But that's all the examples I want to look at today. I know it was a lot, but hopefully you're stronger now. And that's what's important. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.